वेलकम बैक टू डॉक्टर सुचेता इंटरेक्टिव क्लास फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थैंक्स लॉट फॉर योर कॉमेंट्स सजेशन एंड सब्सक्रिप्शन I welcome you all to today's thermal analysis uh, video where we are going to learn in detail about thermogravimetric analysis. This instrument has done lots of uh, changes. Welcome back to Dr. Sucheta's interactive class. First of all, thanks a lot for your comments, suggestions and subscriptions I welcome you all to today's thermal analysis uh, video where we are going to learn in detail about thermogravimetric analysis This instrument has done lots of uh, changes Welcome back to Dr. Sucheta's interactive class. Thanks a lot for your comments, suggestions and subscriptions. Today we are going to learn in detail on thermal analysis. One of the technique of thermal analysis we are going to see that is thermogravimetric analysis. This instrument has done lot of changes like initially it was very simple. Now the advanced instrument has made many changes where you are getting thermogram directly you can see on the pc this is an advancement with the thermogravimetric analysis now the world thermo defines me it ha the technique has been some relation with temperature gravimetric analysis you might have done re in your regular practicals where you might have precipitated some of the compounds filtered dried wet and then the quantitative estimation by using gravimetric analysis now we'll see today what is thermogravimetric analysis what we are going to do is we are taking definite amount of sample and mass of the sample we are going to record its weight with respect to increase in temperature we are going to record the here in thermogravimetric analysis what we are going to do is we are taking definite amount of the sample and we are going to measure the weight loss of sample with increase in temperature during this process your reactants may convert into some products or release of gas is observed the release of gas may react with again your reactant and show me the product with mass gain too this process occurs with change in mass if the so sample does not show any change in mass we can't do the thermogravimetric analysis here we are having the data obtained during the analysis is an thermogravimetric curve where time against temperature against the loss in weight is observed between room temperature to 1600 degrees celsius there are three types of thermogravimetric analysis first is isothermal or static gravimetric analysis in this technique the sample weight is recorded as a function of constant temperature isothermal we have learned this term during our entropy and enthalpy temperature remains constant quasi static thermogravimetric analysis where the technique in this sample is heated with constant weight and a series of increase in temperature dynamic thermogravimetry in this technique sample is heated in an environment whose temperature is changing in temperaturally linear manner the main component here in thermogravimetric analysis is thermo balance where you can see the sample is kept in a uh, container where you are having a thermocouple uh, near to it you are having a micro balance recording balance sample holder these are the furnaces the data recording unit you have to maintain the heating rate and time measurement micro balance is most important unit of this thermogravimetric analysis where you are taking definite amount of sample and recording change in mass it provides you electronic signal with change in mass it should have a capacity of auto weight it should operate eco friendly modern micro balance does not have any affection any 
they are not going to affect the vibrations recorder balance this actually records show the change in weight with respect to the deflection there are two types deflection balance like you are having on regular pan balance where you are doing the weight of the sample initially there were deflection balances then we are you might have seen some balances where a string has been attached and the uh, pan has been there shown and you are having on right hand side the change in weight null point balance similarly like a null deflection it shows you deflection in the weight and again come back to the regular zero sample holder there are actually various types of sample holder like you are using and containers shallow pan that is open uh, dip crucibles a small uh, container type crucibles which are there uh, you are using regularly in your parametric analysis loosely covered crucibles where uh, it has a lead which is loosely covered so that the escape of the gas released during the heating process may be the uh, easily done retort cups compact one they may be made up of platinum aluminum quartz or alumina nowadays like graphites stainless steel glass sample holders also available fourth component is the furnace furnace is designed in such a way that it produces linear heating range it should have an hot zone which can hold the sample and crucible and its temperature corresponding to the temperature of the furnace the temperature range can affect the internal atmosphere of the furnace chamber therefore it is necessary to choose specific type of furnace which shows temperature range according to the furnace if we have done a thermogram of some sample for example calcium carbonate chalk which you are using if i take the powder of the chalk definite amount of the chalk has been utilized and some experiment i carry out with this technique like thermogrammetric analysis it shows variation with respect to the atmosphere present around it during the analysis it shows variations with respect to the sample holder which you are using see how it affects the thermogram the composition of cso3 in air shows loss in weight with release of co2 at 750 in vacuum it shows at 500 and in uh, co2 it shows in presence of co2 it shows 980 atmosphere if i change the containers loosely packed container it shows decrease in weight of release of co2 at around 700 or 800 if i use a crucible like container where compactly filled calcium carbonate is there it may show increase in temperature range with for release of co2 and if i use a crucible with lead it again shows increase in temperature so compact feeling of your sample inside the container definitely affects the thermogram recorder the output of the microbalance and furnace are recorded using the chart recorder the recording system are mainly of two types time based potentiometric strip chart recorder and xy recorder xy recorder is more useful where you will get a plot of weight directly against the temperature now nowadays there are advantages made where you are getting percentage of mass change with respect to temperature too again without calculation that will be more useful for you to get the information heating rate usually the rate of temperature heating should be customized number of increase of degrees per minute usually 3.5 degree per minute usually they uh, uh, apply the so heating rate should be perfect with respect to per degree you are increasing with per degree that should be linear heating and cooling rate used to be constant and that will give you linear change the time measurement it is done by the thermocouple different mat materials are used like uh, chromal and alumal Uh, we have seen like just now the factors affecting the tga analysis the instrumental factor the furnace heating rate recording chart speed furnace atmosphere geometry factors affecting tga analysis there are 
uh, two types of factors one is instrumental factors instrumental factors in the furnace heating rate the heating heating rate should be specified and it should be linear per degree per degree per minute recording charge speed the recording charge speed where you are you can give the time as one of the parameter temperature and mass furnace atmosphere are you using vacuum you are using nitrogen as an inert atmosphere or o2 which furnace atmosphere you are using it will affect the thermogram geometry of the sample holder and location of the sensors geometry of the sample holder like we have seen whether it is compact closely packed lead sensitivity of the recording system should be highly sensitive with respect to loss in mass composition of the sample container it is made up of silica alumina stainless steel you have to keep that constant so that it will show me the correct results when you are heating rate i think here again i want to repeat that heating rate usually preferred is 3 or 3.5 degree celsius per minute if you use pure n2 gas that will be inert to your released gases the second factor which affect the tg analysis is sample characteristic amount of sample amount of sample affects a lot with respect to loss in mass nowadays there are many instrument which are highly sensitive which can do the analysis of the tg analysis of 5 mg of sample 2 second factor here is the released gases during the analysis which may show solubility with respect to sample that again affect your analysis particle size if you have a very small particle size it will increase the surface area like we have seen in charcoal or the absorption factor so if you are increasing release uh, surface area by decreasing the size it will easy for the released gases to evacuate from the sample heat of reaction whether during the analysis the reactions may affect like exothermic release of gas may increase the temperature or absorption of temperature during the reaction sample packing when you are taking the sample weighing the sample putting in a crucible you have to do little bit tapping so that it will be compactly settled down inside the crucible nature of the sample which type of the sample you are taking for analysis it affects the tg curve sometimes it shows physical changes it may stick to the container so that definitely affect the tg analysis here we are going to see some examples uh, uh, or thermogram first example we have chosen over here is thermogrammetric analysis of calcium oxalate monohydrate like cac2o4 dot h2 here monohydrate again gives you one clue that it has water now after looking at the thermogram which where we are taking definite amount of sample and heating at linear rate and loss in weight has been observed you can see there are step wise decrease in weight so here the first step of decrease in weight is observed with release of h2 why i can see firmly with release of h2 at 100 degree 110 degree you will observe definitely the evaporation of water second step of loss of weight has been correlate we can correlate with release of co monoxide and in third case whatever loss in weight we can correlate with co2 so you have to guess and find out if initial compound has been given to you you have to find out number of reactions taken place during the thermogrammetric analysis which will be easy for you to find out loss in weight with respect to the particular component of your chemical in first case you can say loss in weight will be correlated directly with water in second step loss in weight directly correlated with carbon monoxide and in third case loss in weight directly correlated with release of co2 now when you are having some theoretical problems based on this you just have to calculate molecular weight of this particular initial reactant molecular weight of each of the product 
you just correlate with them that this is expected if i take this uh, uh, calcium oxalate its total molecular weight you can correlate with calcium oxalate by releasing uh, water and initial weight of the sample loss in weight you can correlate with the amount of water got it second example we are going to discuss over here is thermal decomposition of copper sulfate pentahydrate so copper sulfate that is the blue color salt you might have seen in the labs so thermogram of that particular salt we are going to learn over here as the formula directly tells you that there are five h2o molecules so definitely i expect during the thermogram at about 100 120 degree the loss of water molecule you can see the first step decrease in wet you can correlate this particular step with loss of water molecule so you can write down simply the reaction the first step reaction as copper sulfate pentahydrate with release of five h2o molecule and copper sulfate as one of the product now the second step has been observed over here where you are having release of so2 and half o2 from copper sulfate you are having release of so2 and half o2 now how i can guess this that if i hit this compound i have to guess which is the stable product i can obtain with heat so metal oxide is usually a stable product if i remove metal oxide from here so2 is again the non stable product for me so half o2 i can write directly in the third step if copper oxide is there in contact with oxygen it may form the stable product of copper oxide as monoxide as copper dioxide over here cu2o with release of oxygen so we can calculate loss of water molecule simply by knowing the atomic weight units of copper sulfate of each of the atom over here as total 249 copper sulfate as it is as 159.62 amu so weight of formula weight of copper sulfate with respect to formula weight of copper sulfate pentahydrate multiplying it with 100 we can get what we can get percent of copper sulfate present in copper sulfate pentahydrate okay 100 minus this value i can correlate directly with the number of water molecules present in the given compound this is the third tj curve we are going to learn is silver nitrate now just guess for a while which particular reaction you can form by heat in agno3 which are the stable product i can form over here which are observed in nature as it is yes very good you can form no2 from this you can form o2 from this and simply as a silver now we'll see in detail how the thermogram it's a horizontal initially and decrease in weight only one step reaction so if it is a one step reaction i can write down directly whatever product you have just told me as it is on product side so hno3 after heating it give definitely a silver as one of the product no2 as second product and o2 so from this particular thermogram what other information i can gather are agno3 is stable thermally stable up to temperature 473 so thermal stability of the compound second parameter we can get from this is thermal stability or i can say decomposition temperature after this it start going to decompose and convert it into agno2 and o2 third example we are going to learn over here is sodium dodecal benzyl sulfonate sdbs an organic compound which usually used in detergents cleaning products and pesticides we'll see its thermal stability which are the different compounds it releases and what residue it shows in your thermogram so if i take sdbs if i start heating if i start heating the i'll observe the thermogram there are two steps 
in first step like we have seen organic quantitative analysis if i heat a compound i'll get in combustion tube we have seen carbon and hydrogen contain we can find out just by heating the compound in combustion tube it will release co2 and water so here i can say simply this is the chain of c12h25 attached to the benzene compared to benzene this i can release from the structure so first step i can correlate that release of c12h25 part of this molecule second step i can see release of c6h12 organic part of this molecule and residue remain as nah so3 so i can see during so the thermal thermal stability of this compound is up to 404 30 then it start disintegrate converts itself and show you residue of sodium sulfate monohydrate sulfate the thermal analysis has wide application nowadays uh, in textile industry too it has been utilizing now if i just see um, what type of uh, clothes you want in future or what type of clothes you, characteristic you want in uh, clothes it should be waterproof color should not fade resistance to wear and tear and you should you want a uh, material which does not shrink after washing usually um, that are the demands of the customer where you can carry out the thermal analysis of the polyester rubber cotton silk and you can comply the demands of the customer by studying the thermogram very good application of thermal analysis so we have understood today the what is tga what are the different components of tga what are the factors affecting tga we have seen different thermograms over here and we are taking an overview of applications of tga so what we can where we can apply what we can gather the information from this tga is we can note down definitely the purity of the compound thermal stability of the compound we can learn different solid state reaction i am giving a stress on state as solid state reaction decomposition of organic and inorganic compounds determining the composition of the mixture corrosion of the metal at various atmospheres pyrolysis of the coal petroleum and wood roasting and calcination of minerals reaction or kinetic study of different reactions evaluation of gravimetric precipitates oxidation reduction stability to determine definitely the moisture volatile and ash content it is universally done you you might find some practicals based on this determine the moisture content volatile content and ash content you might find some problems based on this particular determination dissolution sublimation vaporization sorption desorption and chemisorption in all these area thermogrammetric analysis has been widely applied i hope you like today's video you have understood the thermogrammetric analysis uh, if you have, uh, have any queries you may contact you may give comments on this particular video uh, we have learned one of the thermal analysis today that is tga wait for my next video where we are going to learn differential thermal analysis that is dta part of thermal analysis thank you please like and subscribe my video thank you